Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. So if you didn't already know, RetroArch is a game emulator front end capable of playing games from dozens of different retro systems. So the news here today is that RetroArch finally has a full Steam release and it's also natively optimized for Apple Silicon hardware, including the ARM64 chip. And today I'm going to show you a full tutorial on how to get RetroArch working on macOS, how to load up the ROMs and also BIOSes, and how to improve the graphics settings as well. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming tutorials. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the RetroArch.com website and I'm going to leave a link to this in the description. Then on the website itself, we're going to go to the download section here and click download. And then we're going to scroll down and then we're going to find the list of supported platforms. So these are various Windows platforms. We're going to scroll down even further. This is Linux, Raspberry Pi, Android, etc. All the way until we get to this gray Apple logo here. So this says Apple Mac OS, ARM64. So I think that downloading the standalone version is going to be a little bit better than downloading this on Steam because we don't have any dependencies. I'll go ahead and press download here. And this is going to download the ARM64 Metal version of RetroArch. So once the download's complete, what we can do is click on RetroArchMetal.dmg here, or we can go to our finder, go to the downloads folder here, and then double click on RetroArchMetal.dmg. And then this is going to open up the DMG file. Then we have the RetroArch application here. We're going to go ahead and hold down left click and then drag this and then drop this into the applications folder. And then it's gone ahead and installed in applications. So if we go back to applications here and then scroll down, we're going to find RetroArch here. If I control click and then get info, you can see that this is a universal universal binary. So this is going to run natively and be optimized for the Apple Silicon Mac. So all we need to do now is to double click on RetroArch and then this is going to load up the main menu. So at this point, I do recommend using a controller of some kind in order to interface and use RetroArch. You can use a mouse and keyboard, of course. However, controller is probably the best method to do so. So this is a DualShock 4 controller. You can also use DualSense or Xbox One or Xbox Series controllers. Those are all going to work fine if you pair them with Bluetooth. So here we're going to turn my controller on and then mine's already been paired with this particular Mac. If you want to find out how to do that, then check out the link in the description. And basically we can control this menu all with the controller. What I'm also going to do is to full screen this by clicking on this green button here, and that's going to provide a full screen interface. And then we can control this whole thing with the controller. You'll often find that with the controller, the accept and cancel buttons are reversed just like they are in East Asia. So all we need to do in order to achieve this is go to the settings menu and then go to input. Then we scroll down until we get to menu controls. Then we're gonna menu swap OK and cancel buttons. And now this button is back and then this button is OK. So I'll reverse that now. And I'm now used to these controls and they're gonna be similar to an Xbox or PlayStation system menu. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the main menu and then go to import content and then scan directory. So within this, we're gonna to navigate to the directory. We're gonna keep all of our ROMs. So if I command tab here, you can see that I've kept all my ROMs in this emulation folder here where I've got various Wii U, 3DS, Dreamcast, DS, etc. games. I'm not going to be able to tell you where to download these games from. Ideally, what you should be doing is dumping those games yourself from original discs, or you can easily find them online. I'm not going to be able to show you exactly where to get them from, but they're readily available. If you just type in the name of the game and then the word ISO or ROM, then there are dozens of places on the internet where you can find these games. So basically what I want to do is to go ahead and find the folder where I've kept all of my ROMs. So if I go to my user folder here and I put them in my my documents folder. Here's asking for permission. I'm going to press OK. And then I've got my emulation folder. And basically, I want to use this directory as the master directory for all of my ROMs. So I'm going to press scan this directory and it's going ahead and scan all of the games in all of the various subfolders here. So whilst this is working, you can still go ahead and go back. And the next thing we want to do is go to the main menu and then we want to go ahead and download a whole bunch of cores. So I'm going to press download a core and it's going ahead and fetching the core list. So not all of the cores are downloaded automatically with RetroArch, you have to go ahead and select them yourself. So I loaded up the directory and a whole lot of games have been detected. And what I need to do now is also download a whole bunch of cores. So if I go to the main menu and press load core, then what we need to do is basically select all of the cores that we required in order to get these games to work. So I've got some Game Boy Advance, SNES cores, PlayStation cores, etc. And what I need to do is press download a core and then go ahead and select all the cores that you need depending on the games and ROMs that you're trying to run. So for 
example, common one is going to be PlayStation Portable or PCSX Rearmed. I'm also going to run a couple of Nintendo ones as well. We're going to run SNES SFC B SNES and also Game Boy Advance. So once we're done, we're going to go out of here and we're going to go into our games. And for example, let's run Super Mario All Stars. We're going to select this now and then we're going to go ahead and set the core association. And we're going to be using B SNES. And then all we need to do is to press run. So now Super Mario All Stars is running. So we're going to go ahead and play Super Mario Bros. So if you want to change any of the settings on this graphics call, all you need to do is just press the home button and then we can go down and scroll down until we get to the core options section here. And then we have the ability to go to video settings and we can change things like the preferred aspect ratio. For example, we can change this to like a power aspect ratio and that's going to be a little bit more squished because it's going to replicate to the kind of 50 hertz displays at the time. And we can also change to NTSC, for example, which is going to go into 4x3. You can also change settings to do with, say, emulation hacks and enhancements. So there's the ability to to turn on internal run ahead, which allows for less input lag into many emulated games. Each of the core settings are going to be slightly different. So definitely make sure to experiment with different cores as you're going to have very different experiences depending on which core you're using. I'm going to go ahead and load up another game. We're going to go to PlayStation Portable and I'm going to go ahead and run God of War Ghost of Sparta. I'm going to go ahead and set the core association to the PPSSPP core and then I'm going to go ahead and press run. And this is going to run the game and we're going to go ahead and full screen this as well. So you can see here that the PSP graphics are pretty low resolution, but all you need to do is to press the home button. So first thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and save the state so that we can come back to this slot. And then we're gonna go and scroll down and then go to core options. So this is where we can change the video settings and then go to the video menu here. And then we can change the internal resolution. So at the moment, it's set to 480 by 270, which is which is a very, very low display resolution. What I wanna do is to put it at 920 by 1088. And this is gonna be basically four times the internal resolution. So this is gonna make things much smoother. And I'm gonna leave all of the other settings on default. So basically what I wanna do is go back, then we're gonna go to settings. Then we're going to main menu and then quit RetroArch. Then we're going to reload it again, full screen, go back into the game, go ahead and load up Ghost of Sparta again, press run, full screen, go to the home button, then we're going to load state. And now we're at 4x resolution and it's looking a hell of a lot smoother. So you can see a pretty huge difference in the graphical fidelity just by bumping up the resolution four times. So the last thing I'm going to do is to show you how to load up a BIOS for certain emulators. So for example, if you're trying to run PlayStation 1 games, then you're going to load up the Sony PlayStation 1 BIOS file. Without this, if you try to run the emulator with just the core, then you're going to get an error message. So now I'm going to show you how to place that BIOS file into the correct location. So you can find the directory settings under the settings menu and if you scroll down you can get to the directory menu here and this will tell you where to place the system BIOS. So this is going to be the user folder under documents under retroarch on forward slash system. So if I command tab here and then I go to my documents folder here under finder and then go to retroarch then you can see that the system folder is where we need to place all of our BIOSes. So I'm not going to tell you where to find these BIOS files. Have for PlayStation 1 as an example all you need is the SCPA 5501.bin and then you need to go ahead and copy and then paste this into the system folder under RetroArch. So just paste this here and then we can go ahead and play any PlayStation 1 game now that the BIOS has been loaded. So here we're going to go down to PlayStation and we're going to load up the game Tekken 3. So I'm just going to open this up now, press OK. We're going to set the core association to PCSX Rearmed and then we're going to go ahead and press the run button and then it's going to go ahead and run the game. So anyway, that is how you get RetroArch working on Apple Silicon Max. It's a very deep decent front end for a whole host of retro game emulators. However, I do find RetroArch a little bit more difficult to use than other alternatives, for example, OpenMU, which has a much easier to use drag and drop interface. If you want to find out how to install that emulator on a Mac and get it working, then please make sure to follow the link in my description. Personally, I still prefer OpenMU over RetroArch. However, OpenMU hasn't been updated since January 2021 and still uses Rosetta 2. You also have a link to my second channel with a playlist of all sorts of game emulators for Apple Silicon hardware. This includes PlayStation 2 emulation, RPC S3, PlayStation 3 emulation, as well as Nintendo Switch emulation 2. Make sure to check it out in the link in the description. Often using an individual emulator is going to give you better performance and easier compatibility in the future as well. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.